So this is going to be a unit basically covering a excerpt from the autobiography of Malcolm X called Learning to Read. Um, it's, if you follow the path of where I'm going to take you with this unit, we'll kind of cover a bunch of different things. But we're going to start today with the overall arching idea of what you should be looking for when you're looking at any type of media. This could be nonfiction, fiction, poetry, drama. You can use this in basically any sort of form, any medium, in almost any class. You can use it when you're reading science texts, when you are approaching mathematical problems. You can think about it when you're even going to start applying for college in the fall and your courses beyond that into college. So using basically this is what I use in my course anyways but this is the overarching scope okay so this is the rhetorical framework for how you can basically approach any type of medium even a movie even a song so you start up at the top um, I should be able to annotate I'm gonna see if I actually can with exigence oh man <laughs> That's kind of, let's try again. Let's try highlighter. Well, that's might be as good as it gets. Um, so you start with exigence. The exigence is the spark. It is the thing that drives someone to think, this is why I need to make this. It, it, it pushes, it's the pushing factor that takes you from just observing your world into thinking, I have something I need to share. It's, this is where you get your idea. It's where you get that, that urge to share. So exegesis is where you start. You can't start down at the bottom with the structure or form. You can't start and think, you know what would be really great? I wanna write a poem. You need to start first with, what do I want to do? And then you follow this chart into the form that's gonna work. So sometimes you have an idea and you think, you know what, the best way to share this would actually be a blog post or a, a Snapchat, or you might be like, the best thing that I could do is write a book, or maybe I need to write a speech. Maybe I need to, I don't know, create algebra. You need to start with an idea first. You need to get that exigence, that spark that leads you to believe that you need to do something. So that's where we're going to start here is with is with the spark. What is the exigence? Okay. So before we even read, how can I unannotate? Let's see, undo, undo. Perfect. Before we even read, we need to think about the exigence. So this is the small um, biographical excerpt that is provided at the beginning of this text. So this is an excerpt, it's not the whole thing, but this is the background information. Okay. So if this is all you get. You have to think, what is the spark? Born Malcolm Little on May 19, 1925, Malcolm X was one of the most articulate and powerful leaders of Black America during the 1960s. A street hustler convicted of robbery in 1946, he spent seven years in prison where he educated himself and became a disciple of Elijah Muhammad, founder of the Nation of Islam. In the days of the civil rights movement, Malcolm X emerged as the leading spokesman for black separatism, a philosophy that urged black Americans to cut political, social, and economic ties with the white community. After a pilgrimage to Mecca, the capital of the Muslim world, in 1964, he became an Orthodox Muslim, adopted the Muslim name Al-Hajj Malik al shabazz and distanced himself from the teachings of black Muslim, that black Muslims. He was assassinated in 1965. In the following excerpt from his autobiography, written in 1965, co-authored with Alex Haley and published the year of his death, Malcolm X describes his self-education. Okay, so we get a lot of information here that might lead us to understand why he wants to write. So what we need to think, again, is this question, why did Malcolm X need this piece. Why does he need to write it? That's the exigence. So let's take a look at some of the things that they're telling us here with this information. Um, 
So can I make it a little bit stronger? So it tells us here, he was born Malcolm Little. So his surname is originally Little. And then later on, you get information that he's later going to change his name to Malcolm X. So something is happening here. Something is happening between when he's born and when he decides to rename himself as Malcolm X. And you need to ask yourself why that might be. Look at how he is described. He is described as articulate. He is described as articulate. He is described as powerful. And then he's also described as a street hustler. So you have these conflicting descriptions of him. So think about the connotation of these words. You get articulate. Articulate means someone who is clear, concise, and well-spoken. Usually the connotation of calling someone articulate might be a bit demeaning. Usually you don't point out how articulate someone is, how well-spoken someone is, unless you are saying you're articulate for a black man. So it might be considered condescending and a negative word here. Powerful obviously could go either way. This could be a positive or a negative term. Um, notice though how they say he is a powerful leader of black America. So not given America overall, but specifically separating the black community. Um, and black is not capitalized. It is used as an adjective here to describe a subsection of America and not given the same authority of capitalizing the B in black as we would with other identities. And then of course you get this, this idea of street hustler. This obviously has some heavy handed connotations. Street hustler could imply someone who is committing illegal activity. It could imply someone doing some things that are probably looked down upon by high society, or in this case, white society. Um, he was convicted of robbery. Um, doesn't necessarily mean he did it or didn't do it. Doesn't necessarily mean he um, is guilty of it or not guilty of it. We don't know because we've not read his autobiography. And the word choice is really specific here. It says convicted of robbery. Um, so we, we aren't really sure, actually, if, if he did, in fact, do the robbery in question. And it says that he spends seven years in prison. Seven years in prison is a long time to think and articulate, to use the vocabulary word, articulate what something that you might want to say. Um, phrasing here of educated himself. So that implies that he was not educated before or at least whatever form of education the author of this specific biographical excerpt would call educated. Of course, you, you can't go through life without being educated. Your parents teach you how to talk or teach you how to live in the world. It's just a different education. Um, he became a disciple of Elijah Muhammad. So this might be a person that we don't know. So they give us this little subordinate clause here if you notice, you see that there's that comma. That comma means that we're going to pause our actual clause of our sentence and we're going to give additional information. So Elijah Muhammad is the founder of the nation of Islam. If we don't know what that is, at least we know that he is someone in a leadership position. He's the founder and that he is obviously coaching other people because Malcolm X is his disciple, meaning someone who listens and receives information from someone in authority. In the days of the civil rights movement, obviously we're going to be familiar with this term. Um, often we're more familiar with the civil rights movement being discussed as Martin Luther King Jr. Malcolm X is going to provide a very different perspective, which I think is it important for us to look at different perspectives even throughout history. Malcolm X emerged, look at that word choice there, emerged. So he wasn't always going to be a leader here and he wasn't only going to always going to be the only voice he emerged as the leading spokesman for black separatism we don't know what that is again they're helping us out here they're giving us that comma 
and they're going to give us a subordinate clause. They're going to tell us what black separatism means. Even if we don't know what it means, we can make an educated guess here um, because we have black, obviously referring to black Americans in this case, and then separatism. So separate, meaning apart, meaning distance. So black separatism, the separation of black people from something. In this case, they're going to tell us. It's a philosophy that urges black Americans to cut political, social, and economic ties with the white community. So separating the black community from, in this case, the, the oppressive white dominant society. After a pilgrimage to Mecca, if we don't know what a pilgrimage is, um, we can assume that it's going to involve some sort of travel because Mecca says it's the capital of the Muslim world and no place in America is considered the capital of the Muslim world. So he's going to Mecca. In fact, a pilgrimage is a travel, is traveling to some sort of holy site or a, or a place that you hold of value. So usually a pilgrimage is somewhere to a religious site, but you can use the word pilgrimage to describe travel to a place that you hold very dear, even if it is not religious. But they do tell us here that Mecca is the capital of the Muslim world. So this is the first time that they've specifically um, given us a, a, an event. So this happens in 1964. Um, so we know that at some point, oh, I'm doing a lot of clicking. At some point, he became a disciple of Elijah Muhammad, the, the uh, founder of the Nation of Islam, while he was in prison. Then he actually goes to Mecca in 1964 and becomes an, an Orthodox Muslim. So even if we don't know what the word Orthodox means, we know it must be important in some case because they're using it as an adjective here for the word Muslim. We already know that Malcolm X is Muslim. They told us that because he's a disciple of Elijah Muhammad, who's the founder of the Nation of Islam. So he's learning from someone who is Muslim, and we know that he is part of that, mo that movement in America. But if it's telling us he became an Orthodox Muslim, there must be a change. And in fact, there is. Orthodox generally here is going to mean a more traditional or conservative um, variety of the religion. So it's, it's a little bit more old school. It's going to be following scripture more closely. And it says that he adopted the Muslim name Al-Hajj Malik Al-Shabazz. As you can tell, the nomenclature of this name, um, this is definitely um, going to be a choice that's distancing him even further from American culture on purpose, or I shouldn't say American culture, I should say the dominant culture. Um, because you see, we have the chain change from Malcolm Little to Malcolm X, and then adopting a Muslim name. Um, and then continuing to sort of distance himself from the teachings of black Muslims. So his educational journey is sort of taking him further and further in, in his own direction. Then we get sort of this shocking information, if we don't know it. He was assassinated in 1965. Um, so the usage of the word assassinated here is going to be important. Usually we just say murdered, killed. Assassinated denotes someone of importance. So obviously there's something going on here. Then we get that this is his excerpt from his autobiography. We already knew that it was released the same year he was killed. Um, Co-authored by Alex Haley, who we don't have any additional information about. Um, one could maybe assume that if you are quite busy um, <laughs> leading um, Black separatism during the Civil Rights Movement, perhaps you might need a, a co-author because <laughs> you might be quite busy. Um, and then we get this final phrase, his self-education, okay? Um, so this self-education is the important part that we're trying to focus on here. So after looking at this information, after thinking about all this information, 
now we need to go to the question again, which is why? Why? Why is he why is he writing this? Why did he need to write this piece? What could he possibly have to say? And that's where we need to think about the exigence, which you can get just from that bibliography, if that biographical information. So at, at this point, you might want to stop and think to yourself what the exigence might be before we kind of are going to move on a little bit here. So we're going to think about what's called the rhetorical situation. Okay. The rhetorical situation is what's happening around the conversation that leads to this. We know that this is the civil rights movement. We know that this has to do with the nation of Islam and maybe black separat whoa, separatism, separatism, separatism. <laughs> um, and we definitely know that Malcolm X is involved here. We know that he was assassinated. So there's probably going to be some, some pushback from people who disagree with him. So the civil, civil rights movement, if we're familiar with that, we understand that this is the period of time in which Americans who had been oppressed in, in various ways, but mostly we're talking about racial oppression here, which of course is tied to all other kinds of oppression, um, class, gender. Um, and then sort of the subsect of that, which is the nation of Islam and black separatism, which is sort of this distancing from the dominant culture. So while Martin Luther King Jr. was part of the civil rights movement that was sort of the opposite, you know, trying to bring together white Christian America and black Christian America and talk about similarities, this is more separate. This is how we're different and how we could still continue to keep our identity and be different. Um, we know that it's called learning to read. Why do you think this idea of self-educating, why is the idea of self-educating, self-education so important in this time period for people of color, specifically Black Americans? I mean, you could think about it in the context of any anybody who is being oppressed in the civil rights movement, but I think that he's specifically talking about Black Americans in this case. So why self-education? You could probably assume what he's going to say, what his claim is going to say is, you need to educate yourself. You need to educate yourself. Something is wrong with our country and the way that we have been running our society. And you need to learn your history. You need to learn what's going on. You need to self-educate. So that's the exigence. That's that spark. He sees what's going on around him. He's in jail. He's reading. He's learning. And now he needs to say something. So that's where we're going to stop for right now. Um, so that's sort of our exigence lesson. That's where we're going to leave it off. Um, I will be back again with the next lesson where we'll read a section of this excerpt together and do a little bit more of a deep dive.